Now let's talk about subtools, subtool organization, and essentially subtools, what are they? How do they work? So I'm gonna hit the comma key. We're gonna go into our tool menu. I'm gonna double click this demo soldier because this has a lot of subtools. So if I hit the comma key again, get rid of light box, drag this out of my canvas, go into edit mode, hit F to frame. Here's our demo soldier. And you're gonna see he has a number 11 next to him. And that's if I open up the subtool, he has 11 subtools. Now right up here at the top of subtool, you're gonna see there's a visible count. I have mine set to nine by default. I think maybe by default it's like set to five or something. So you can increase or decrease this. And again, if you want this visible tool count every time you open up ZBrush, just go in here to preferences, config, store config, and it'll keep that number there for you. Now, one important thing I wanna mention when it comes to subtools is uh, we have this subtool selected and we got all these other subtools in here. So if I go into solo mode, I can see just this part and it's basically his body. So you know, let's say I go down here, I have the subtool selected. I want to go down here and say rename. So I'm going to rename this body. Now, if I go up here and I say, okay, tool save as, and I throw this on my desktop, you're going to see it defaults the name to body Z tool. I was like, well, I want to name the Z tool body. I want to name it soldier. So I'm going to go to soldier, hit save. And you're going to see, of course, it saved the soldier.z tool. However, it renamed my top subtool soldier. Not ideal. So let's talk about, <laughs> real quickly, append and insert. Uh, if I go over here to append, I can append any imported objects or other Z tools I have open or any primitives. The cool thing about this is if I append like a ring 3D that's a primitive and I go down here, you're gonna see it's gonna automatically convert it to a polymesh 3D. So I don't have to go in here and say, make polymesh 3D, it'll convert it automatically for me. Let's go ahead and go down here and let's delete that subtool and say, always oh, okay. Let's scroll all the way back to the top here. Go back to the soldier here, and instead of append, let's do insert. So append through that all the way at the bottom of my subtool stack. I'm gonna to go to insert here. We're gonna insert a polymesh 3D. Let's go out of subtool mode here and turn on transparency. So you're gonna see I have this polymesh 3D star just in the middle of my scene here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit W to go into gizmo mode. I'm gonna grab this big yellow square in the middle and uniformly scale it down. Then I can grab this green arrow here and just move it up just basically in the middle of his body so it's out of the way. I don't have to do that because I can turn off visibility which I'll show you in a second but sometimes it's nice just to have it small and out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is I need to reorganize this a little bit because what I want to do is take this star and put it at the very top because whatever your top subtool is is what's going to inherit the Z tool name. So I'm going to take this star here I'm going to do this bent up arrow and that's going to move this up one. Now these arrows right here are selection arrows, so I can click this and it goes down, click this and it selects up. So it's not moving anything, it's just selecting. You can also use your keyboard down and up to select subtools. But the bent up arrows actually move a subtool. In fact, if I select the star right here, now let's go ahead and turn off transparency. If I hold down shift and bent down arrow, it'll shoot it to the bottom of my stack. If I hold down shift and bent up arrow, it'll shoot it to the top. So it's at the top now, let's go in here to save as, and this time I'm gonna save over my soldier Z tool, say yes. This is gonna inherit the soldier name, and now this one I can safely rename to body, and we're good to go. Now let's hit Q to go back into draw mode, and let's talk about subtool selection. I really don't like going through a big subtool stack and trying to figure out like what these little things are and trying to like, okay, well, okay. And if I don't have anything named, it's gonna be extra difficult. Uh, so instead of going over here and selecting subtools, usually what I'll do is I'll just tap Alt or I'll hold down Alt and I'll just tap on my screen. So again, if I just wanna work on the body, I'll tap Alt, tap the body or hold down Alt, tap the body and then go into solo mode here and I can start sculpting on the body independently. Of course, we can turn on X symmetry and sculpt across our X axis. Now, there's another way to do this. If I go out of solo mode, you're gonna see there's an eyeball associated with my body. If I turn off my eyeball, nothing happens because I have the body selected. So regardless of visibility, which is what that eyeball is, it's basically visibility on or off. If the subtool is selected, it will always be visible. However, as soon as I go down here and click shirt, the body disappears. So if I go through here and turn off these eyeballs, say for the vest, the backpack, and the shoulder guard, those will start disappearing out of your scene because you're turning off their visibility. And of course you can turn the eyeball back on to show their visibility. So what's it, let's say I wanna just hide everything except for the body. What I can do is I can hold down shift and well, first of all, the body has to be selected for this to work. And then I'm gonna go over here and hold down shift and turn off the eyeball for the selected subtool. What that's gonna do 
is turn off visibility for every subtool in my scene, including the body. However, because the body's selected, it's still visible. And if I want to, I can go over here and turn that eyeball back on. And now it's essentially like I clicked solo mode. If I want to turn everything back on, just make sure the eyeball is off. And then any subtool you have selected where the eyeball is off, if you hold down shift and turn the eyeball back on, that'll turn the subtool visibility back on for everything. So you may be thinking, well, why would I want to hold down shift? And you can also tap the nameplate to turn visibility back on for any subtool as well. So you can select it, touch the nameplate, touch the nameplate again to turn it off, and then select another subtool. Anyway, you may be thinking, you know, why would I want to hold down shift, turn off the body, and then just sculpt on the body? Why, why not just go into solo mode? Well, the reason is if I hold down shift and then turn everything back on, what if I want to work on the body, the shirt, and the wrists? Well, I could throw those in a folder, which we'll get to in a second, but you know, it's also easy enough for me to go, you know what, I want to work on that body, right? I'm going to hold down shift, bent down arrow, alt tap the shirt, bent down arrow, shift, bent down arrow, alt tap the wrist, shift, bent down arrow. I know the bottom three are the subtools I want to work on, shift, turn off the eyeball, tap the nameplate, turn on, turn on. Now I have the body, the shirt, and the wrists. Easy enough. I work on these three subtools until I'm done, then I hold down shift, turn the eyeballs off, turn them on, and now everything's back on, and I can work on something else. Say, the backpack, the backpack, the shirt, and the vest. Again, easy enough. Shift, bend down arrow, alt tap, shift, bend down arrow, alt tap, shift, bend down arrow, shift, turn everything off, turn them back on. Now I have those three selected and available to work on. Shift, turn everything back on and off, and you can see very quickly I don't have to worry about subtools or folders or anything like that. I can just go through here, alt tap, move things around as needed, and work however I'd like. Now for another quick selection, there is a list all over here. So if you click that button, it's going to pop this little menu out. And in fact, if you hit the N key, you can go through here and it's just like the brush palette. So in this instance, we have three subtools that start with B, boots, body, and backpack. So if I hit the B key, it's going to narrow it down to just my subtools that start with B. And even here, I can hit B again to hit boots, or O for body, and A for backpack. So let's go ahead and select our boots here. Now if I hit N again, you're going to see my boots are no longer selectable because they're already selected. So when I hit B, I've only got, oh, I've got three options. I didn't realize I had the belt selected. So I have actually four subtools of uh, that start with B. Now I've got body, belt, and backpack. So I select the body, and then hit B and then hit N, and then B. Of course, the body's already selected. It's not going to show up here, but boots, belt, and backpack are available. So another way to quickly select subtools in your scene. In this instance, by name, but also by visibility, if it's just a little bit easier to see all of these as opposed to scrolling down in your stack. Now, kind of semi-related, I don't know, maybe not, but underneath Transform, there's an expose option. Let's go ahead and take our transform menu and just dock it over here to the left. So we have transform and expose, and we have X and Y plane. So we hit expose, it's gonna take all my subtools and lay them out in an XY plane. So what you can do is actually go through here and alt tap whatever you'd like, and then go back here, hit that expose button, and then I'll go back. Now, of course, you can just dial in an expose amount. If you don't want to go the full 100, you can just tell it how much you want it to and tell what axis you want. So if you want X, Y, and Z, this will go in all directions, but usually X and Y is fine, and the full expose amount is usually fine too. So I'll go ahead and hit expose, and close everything back down. Now we've already talked about solo mode, so if I go through here and I have the body selected, I go into solo mode, I'm sculpting on the body, and then I go out of here. You may accidentally hit this little dynamic above solo, and what that's going to do is it's kind of a performance thing. So if I hold down alt and tap the shoulder pad, and I start navigating around my scene. It's going to hide everything else and then it's going to show everything. So you may, it may be kind of a little bit disorienting while you're moving stuff around. If that bothers you, just make sure you turn off dynamic and it'll be back to normal. Now while we're here talking about subtools, let's just go through these options here. Uh, folder we'll get to in just a second. Uh, rename we've already talked about. Auto reorder is an interesting one. If we hover over this, you're going to see this go these goggles are 40,000 points and then the body's 32. As you hover over these, you're going to see the point count goes down. So by default, hitting auto reorder will organize your subtools in order from most polygons to least polygons, and then hitting that again will go from least to most. And fortuitously, 
our stars at the very top, our name catcher. So you know what, we'll just go ahead and keep that order for now. Here's all low and all high. So we have subdivision history on some of these. You're going to see this vest here, if we go down here to geometry, has two subdivision levels. The boots have three. So they get kind of a smooth look here. So if I go over here and I say all low, that's going to turn all of my subtools here to their lowest subdivision option available. And then same thing for all high, everything goes to the highest subtool option. Now where this can kind of come in handy, if I go down here to merge, subtool merge, and say merge visible, here's all your subtools merged into one tool here. You're going to see there they all have the right subdivision level or the highest subdivision level, I should say. You can also delete a subtool out of here. So let's say delete this one, disappears completely from your scene. If we go back to our demo soldier here and we say all low and then say merge visible, you're going to see it'll just merge at the lowest. So interesting, maybe. So we'll go back to our demo soldier here and we'll say all high. Here we have duplicate. So if we go up here to the wristbands and we hit duplicate, and then hit W and just move those up, you're going to see we have two identical wristbands. And this kind of brings up something interesting. If you go up here to Tool Clone, what that's going to do is take your selected subtool and clone it off into its own tool. So you're going to see here's wristbands and now it's by itself in its own uh, tool folder. So that's, how, that's what Clone does. So let's go ahead and delete that. Select our Demo Soldier and you're also going to see up here Copy Tool. What that's going to do is copy your entire tool, including all the subtools. We're going to copy that. Then we'll go ahead and select Polymesh 3D. We'll say Paste Tool. And now we have two identical tool stacks available to us. So we'll go ahead and select one of these. And instead of hitting Delete, we'll say Delete All. Now get rid of all those. Let's go over here and uh, close our Transform menu, close our Brush menu, go in here to Z Plugin, drag that white dot over. And go down here to Subtool Master. So we're talking about subtools. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do over here in the Subtool Master area. And in fact, when we get to folders, there's even a copy and a paste folder. The first thing you're going to see over here is multi-append. So if you have a folder full of Z tools or a bunch of OBJs and you don't want to sit here and go import an OBJ, append, import an OBJ, append, this is a really easy way to do that. This probably isn't the best way to go about this, but what I can do is I can say dog working, clay pot, in my file. So I'll select all of these, say open with multi-append, and that's just going to append all of those down here. So you're going to see here's my file and whatever was in there. Here's my clay pot and here's my dog working. So that'll work with FBXs, OBJs, and Z tools. And again, if you don't want any of these, just go through here and just hit delete until they're gone. Now be very careful with that delete key or that delete button. If you hit it too many times, you'll delete a subtool you actually wanted and uh, there's no undo for that. Same thing with export. So if I go up here and I say tool export, that's going to export an OBJ by default and it's only going to be for that one subtool. Now I can go in here to FBX export and this will export, uh, basically an FBX file will export, let's go ahead and say test, hit save, and it will actually export one file with all of my name subtools in there if I choose visible or all. If you do select it, it's going to act like an OBJ, just export the one subtool. But if you do visible, smooth normals, you could even export cameras with your FBX and you hit OK, it'll export one FBX file that's going to contain all of these objects, named objects, which is really good for baking. Like if you wanted to bake this in Substance Painter and name all these underscore high and underscore low and export the high and low as separate FBX files, it will look at the named objects within. Same thing with multi-insert, that's just inserts instead of appends. A lot of really cool stuff in here. Do visible. You can go through here and clean up your subtool names if you have any duplicate names. Fill if you want to fill with a color and a material. Color, material, or and or color and material, etc. So I just wanted to make sure I brought that up while we were talking about subtools. Now we've already done delete all, you can actually do delete other as well. And that means delete anything other than the one you have selected. So if I have soldier selected here, I say delete other, it's going to delete everything except for this delete, this uh, one right here. And then we can just delete that out of our scene as well. In fact, we hit the comma key and we go in here to tool. Let's load up the demo head, the demo soldier and the dog and hit the comma key. And I've got a bunch of stuff in here and I'm working on it. And it's like, you know what? All I really want to keep 
in my ZBrush session is the dog. Everything else can go away. I don't really need it anymore. So an easy way to clean up your scene is underneath Macro, Macros, and then just say Delete Unselected Tools. So this dog is a tool and it's selected. So if I do Unselected, Delete, hit OK, it'll just kind of clean up my scene. So this is handy. If you prefer to save like File, Save As, and do Z Projects, a good way to clean up your scene and keep your Z Projects uh, not super bloated.